And since I teased you a lot with this photo, I wanted to tell you the story that's actually written on the back. So I'll read it to you. It says, Sweet Grandma Hoydal and her grandchildren while we lived on the Williams Place on Route 4 Arlington. She was blind, yet could knit and sew carpet rags. She lived in the old home with Karn and Marius Hoydal, her children. And Grandma S. Arms, or I'm sorry, and Grandma's Arms, Gordon, Joan, and Marie Hoydal, sitting on front steps, Kennard, Mary Lou, Jean Hoydal, and Dolores Simpkins, Carl Jr., Richard, and Alice, all her son's children. So I thought that was really cool because I don't have a clue who these people are. I wasn't alive then and my dad didn't know who these people were either. He wasn't around at that point either. So this is his mom right there. And, um, and this is her, so this is my grandma and this is my grandma's sister right here. And her brother is the little one right there. That's pretty neat. So my dad remembers stories about this grandma um, and I was fascinated with her story. The fact that she was blind and that she could knit and sew was fascinating to me. And if you look at this photo of her, you can tell, you can tell in the photo that she can't see. She's, she's blind. So then I started to get curious as to what point did she lose her sight? Well, nobody in the family knows when she lost her sight or why she left her, her sight, lost her sight. My dad guesses maybe diabetes that runs strong in their family. Um, but I found another photo and um, this is a photo of her and two of her sons. This is her older son and this is her younger son. And I'm not sure who the two women are in the middle. They're not her daughter. If you look again, she is looking down. Um, that would tell me that she would probably be blind in that photo as well. Um, but I also found another photo of her with all of her um, children. And there she's looking right at the camera. So there, that tells us that she wasn't blind when her children were young. So at some point between her children getting older and um, in the meantime, she, she lost her sight. But I don't know what caused her to lose her sight and I really wish I did. That was kind of a curiosity thing for me. So this particular photo shows her four boys. So this mother, her name was Anne Marie Bakken. I know she liked to go by Marie because most of the photos my grandmother wrote Marie Hoydal um, and left Anne off of the front of it. So for whatever reason, she liked to be called Marie. And um, she had four boys and one daughter. Her daughter was her youngest. And so this is my great grandfather that is, she's holding, that's the youngest right now in this photo. Um, their story is pretty neat. They came from Norway and um, came to the US, but before they came to the US, um, she, let's see, her husband decided to go to Africa and live with an uncle to hopefully start anew there. He had a tannery in Norway that burnt down and he couldn't make money for his family. And he had an uncle that had lived in South Africa for 25 years. So he thought, I'm gonna go there and try to start up a living for my family. And after he started being successful, he sent for his family. And so they came to South Africa. And that is when um, their youngest daughter, Karn, was born, was in South Africa. So her birth record is different than all of her brothers. Yeah, she's the only child that was born in South Africa. So all the rest of them were born in Norway. And then the crazy thing is, is that um, they were being successful there in South Africa. But for some reason, right before the Boer War started, um, my great great grandfather sent his family back home. I don't know if he felt the tension going on. I didn't know anything about the Boer war. Um, I had to look it up. And my dad told me that my great-great-grandfather had served 
in the army in the Boer War for South Africa, but I, I didn't even know it existed. So that was an interesting history to read about. And my great-great-grandfather wrote a history of it. It's, it was all in Norwegian, but his friend um, that was also, that came to America from Norway with him, um, transcribed it into English. And it's like 18, 19 pages long, but it is fascinating. So if that's something that you want me to do in another separate video and tell the story of him and his adventure in the Boer War, it's pretty impressive. So um, anyway, the, they um, left South Africa, she did, with her five children. And I believe um, that the baby Karn was two when they left South Africa. She went back to Norway and waited for her husband. Um, and it wasn't, and he did not return back home for another 18 months. Um, he was captured by the British as a prisoner of war and he was very malnourished. I don't know if he was malnourished before he was captured or if because he was captured, they didn't feed him, but they tried to nourish him before um, they released him at the end of the war. And then they released him and he went home to his family. And I'm sure they were worried sick about him. I, I can't even imagine. So then after he got back from South Africa and joined his family in Norway, they took the long trek to America. I don't even know how they had the willpower to go on to travel to America and to build a life there. Like the tenacity of these people. I think I have like a little tiny piece of that tenacity in me. I, I can't even imagine. So I am so lucky. There's another photo I'm gonna share with you. And look at, this is written by, not my grandmother, but by Karn, the one that, um, that was born in South Africa. And here she is in this photo, right there on the end. And these are all of the grandkids. And this is that same day, um, probably different camera. So you can see the two pictures side by side. Um, this one looks like much higher quality than this one, um, but it's with the same grandma. And, um, and then all of these grandkids, and these are her sons. And um, it's just really fascinating. The other thing that I know about um, my great, great grandmother, Marie and Marie Bakken um, was that her husband passed away quite early and she never remarried. And so I don't know what happened to my great great grandfather. I'd have to dig into his history and find out how he passed away, but she lived quite a bit longer. So anyway, that was fascinating to me. I hope you found a little bit of that story fascinating too. And I hope you can take the information and write the names. That's all this one is. This is all names. How cool is that? All the people that are in these in this photo are all listed. And it was listed by the person that was there in that time. There's nobody else. My dad could not name all of these people. This is priceless. This little piece right here is absolutely a priceless piece of information for our own family history. And I'm so grateful for that. So just because of her doing this, I am able to pick out faces and go through other pictures that aren't labeled and go, that person is right there in this photo and have somebody else say, is this the same person? Do you think, and then compare it. And the two of you can figure out, yeah, that's the same person or no, there's a discrepancy. We need to bring in a third person and figure that out. But it really gives you so much more information than you ever would have had ever. Otherwise, these are just people and I have no clue who they are and why they're there. So even on this one, it says um, top row and it gives the whole list of people. Here's something I didn't realize. So this is all my dad's mother's family, okay? The Hoydal side was my dad's mother's family, not, his, not her father's family. The Simpkins side is her father's family and there are two Simpkins in this photo. I thought that was really neat. I'm like, okay, these were all Hoydals, but listed at the very top is Deseret Simpkins. I'm like, that's great. And then at the very bottom, it says Glenn Simpkins took the photo. So Glenn and Deseret were both there, which means that they were there enjoying with the, with the Hoydals. Why were they there? Because they must have all gotten along. So that was a really neat little piece of info I found out too about my family. Here's another photo. 
and I have no clue what that thing is. Now my dad knew, he said, that's called a donkey. I'm like, a donkey? Seriously, that's a donkey. Well, so this is what they called them. And the first photo I saw of the donkey that I showed my dad was this one right here. Well, look at the back, nothing. Nothing written on it whatsoever. And this was very common back then. Do not think this is a postcard. Do not think they just purchased this. For some reason, back in the early eight, 1900s, late 1800s even, this was a popular thing to put on the backs so you could mail the picture to your family. So a lot of our family photos have postcard on the back of them, but that doesn't mean that they were actually postcards. So anyway, on the back of this donkey photo, my grandma did write on it. So that was extremely helpful. And look, she even put the date, 1909. Now who knows if that date is correct, she was probably guesstimating, but Nonetheless, it's awesome. So now I know, oh, this is a similar photo. I can write that that's a donkey as well and probably around a similar date because the people look very similar, if not the same day, just a different picture, lighting, whatever. So I hope those things help you out with your own family history and that you can realize that it's simple. You can get started today. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up subscribe and pass it on to somebody who you think would benefit from this information too. I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.